So, phylum platyhelminthes, we're going to bump it up a notch with phylum platyhelminthes. And um, these are your flatworms, your planarian, your tapeworms, and your liver flukes. Um, so, these worms um, have a, what appears to be segmentation, but we don't actually classify these as segmented. Segmentation, I'll explain that later when we get into annelid and arthropods. But what you have here is an organism, for example, the tapeworm. The tapeworm has a head, and one of the things we need you to know in your lab manual, it has a head, and at the top of the head, this head is called a scolex, and it has hooks and suckers. And of course, you know that a tapeworm, through its life cycle, one of the main things that it does to survive is that it anchors itself in inside of the intestines of an organism and by the head and the, the scolex, the hooks and the suckers. Then the body starts to reproduce, growing different segmented portions. The body itself is not segmented because it's not an entire body divided by segmentation. It's made of bits and pieces, all of which can break off, and if the head is still there, it's still alive. So it doesn't need the rest of its body. All of the other segments of the tapeworm, so here's a tapeworm here, and you can see if you, I don't know if you can get close up, but you can see all these little pieces, they look like pieces of tape, one on top of the other. These are all sexually reproductive proglotted sections. And all of these can break off, break apart, and each one of these has eggs in it that can start a whole new batch of tapeworms. But this tapeworm only needs its head to survive. All right? So, and then we have other things. They're usually very small. Um, so hooks and suckers, scolex, tapeworm, that's one of the things we want you to focus on. Planarians, the, these are your flatworms. Flatworms don't have enough room for full body systems, and they haven't developed those yet, so they're, they have a fake, a fake body cavity, so we call it a pseudocelum. This is an acelomate group, A and then the word coelomate, C-O-E-L-O-M-A-T-E, -E. and this means it has no body cavity. It's phylum nematoda that begins the pseudocelomate body cavity. So um, when we take a look at planarians, liver flukes, they're super small planarians. Actually, we have to look at under the uh, microscope here, um, and these things here. I think this one is the Leotania, a flatworm, and you can see everything is, there's no sort of roundish appearance. It's all flat. So we have, um, one of the things that are changing across the phylums are the mode of nutrition and ingestion. Things that have a mouth, or are developing a mouth, things that have to take their other organisms at this point, if they're moving in the water free living, they can actually make their bodies move towards their food and ingest. Sometimes they have a formal mouth um, or a, an opening like a mouth, and sometimes they don't. If they're sessile and anchored, like coral, periphera, um, anything that stays in one place, then the movement of the water brings food to them. So these modes of ingestion also have to be considered when you're looking across the characteristics between each phylum. So here with the planarians, they're free living, and some of them cause trouble, and some of them don't. For example, the liver fluke. This is normally found in sheep. Cats can get it. Humans can get flukes. But normally these are sheeps. And if, I don't know if you can see that, how flat they are. They almost look like a miniature piece of bacon. And they're just little pieces of tissue. But they can grow fairly large, maybe to about five or six inches. But they infect the liver. So what they do is they, they can create anemia and conditions that cause animals to be very ill. They, they can be treated for that, um, but if the infestations inside of the organism aren't treated, it, it, you know, it can cause long-term and then eventually fatality, long-term damage. All right, so I guess the best thing, you saw, you saw the picture of the tapeworm. I like this one the best, so I'll just stick with that as far as the tapeworm. Okay, that's, I think that's pretty much, um, Okay, also in terms of the nervous system with platyhelminthes, this is where we start to see the beginning of a rudimentary nervous system called the first ganglia. So that is something you'll need to be putting in your lab manual for the, so the first ganglia is found in the phylum platyhelminthes. 
All right, so let's move on to the next youngest group, and we're going to go to the phylum Nematoda.